The reason I'm saying this, we're talking about heroes of the faith, but not Jesus. Remember that. However, I know there's a point. I'll get to my message yet. There's a point that I'm trying to make. I don't think I forgot about it. It's on its way. It'll be here before morning. And from here till then, I'm buying McDonald's for everybody. Give me that again. That would be John chapter 15. I'm sorry, John chapter 13, verse 15 to 17. This is Jesus speaking. For I have, I have given you an example. Jesus is saying this. I have given you an example. I have given you an example. That you should do as I have done. Is that correct? Yes. That's Jesus coming straight from his mouth. That's why Peter remembered all the messages and sermons Jesus preached as best. Not as much as John, and so on and so forth, but he remembered for a fisherman, he did pretty good. <laughs> he remembered this, as I, made, I talked to you in, in 1 Peter chapter 5. And for I have given you, Jesus has said, an example that you should do as I have done, verse 16. Most surely I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master. Did you get that? How many know that if the master suffered, the servant of that master will also suffer? Yes. But when that master is glorified, no. so will the servant be glorified. <laughs> the servant is not greater as master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who was sent. Pastor said, and I have been sent. You, we have been sent to the body of Christ. You are sent to the world. We all are sent to the world. Right. But we're not greater than the one who sent us. That's right. And he says in verse 15, that you should follow my example because you're not better than me. You're, you're not exempt from what I've been through. If I've been through it, guess what? You're going to go through it too. Jesus said if they've hated me, if they hated you because they hated Ian, me first, are you getting this done? So, and, and this is very, very important because nor is he that is set written to now verse 17. If you know these things, blessed you are if you do them. Did you get that? Now, listen closely. Uh, if you know these things, and John picked up on this, he said, if a man, a believer, knows to do right and doeth it not, to him it is sin. It's called a sin of omission. If Christians know to do the right thing and omit doing that, it becomes a sin as much as if he does something that he shouldn't have done. Does that make sense? But he says, blessed you are if you will do what I tell you. So that means what's wrong? every time that you do the right thing in his name, God throws a favor on you that only his grace and mercy can bestow upon you that money cannot buy. Amen. Money cannot buy. How many like to live in that dimension? Amen. To be blessed of God when Jesus says, I bless you. Man! Just, 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 just think about that for a minute. Jesus saying to you, I bless you. Because you did what I would have done if I was in your shoes. Amen. I would say, well, man, I want those same shoes. I want to keep doing exactly what you'd be doing every time. You see that? Because every time we do the right thing, Jesus says, I bless you for that. I bless you for that. I bless you for that. Jesus says, I bless you. Yes. Pastor? Good preaching. Good preaching. <laughs> now, I think I have time. So, now, that meant, can we talk? Phyllis Diller, can we talk? Let me tell you something. Watch now. 
So we have all this about Jesus leaving as an example and telling us we should follow in his footsteps and going through what he's been through and, 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 and experiencing what he's experienced and we're not better than him, greater than him and, and certainly we're going to go through things like he went through. There's a question about that. But he cannot be our hero, no, our superman or a superstar. How many understand? He's not here physically. He's not here physically. So we don't have him to emulate. We don't have him to watch how he's... You see, Pastor Stephan is a, is a carpenter and a general contractor, but he's a carpenter. And as somebody who wants to learn to carpentry, they'd have to watch him day and night. How did he measure that? What was his vision? Why did he measure that? Why did he cut it that way? Boy, how did he do that? Well, that's smart. But for you to know how to become a good carpenter, you have to hang out with a good carpenter. To become a good painter, if you want to become one, you have to hang around a good painter and watch how he does those fine, smooth strokes of that brush. They call it the magic brush. But Jesus is not here. Are you getting, watch, stay with me now. I know there's some ladies in this church that are prettier than me. <laughs> <laughs> Watch now. But Jesus isn't here. So, what's there left for you to follow? Huh? I know, but you see, the difference is that if he was here physically and we are physical, then physical can identify with physical, but physical now is gone. But we're still physical, and therefore we need a physical to follow. Get that? Can you figure out where I'm going with this? The Apostle Paul says, follow me as I follow the Lord. You get that? Follow me as I follow the Lord. We're, we're humans. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just woke up this morning, Diane pinched me and said, well, I realize I'm human, because it hurts. <laughs> so, <laughs> point I'm making is that we're human. We need example. And, and, and everybody repeat after me. Heroism, or heroism, how do you pronounce it? Heroism translates, translates to safety. Moi, yours truly has coined that statement. Fresh out the press. Heroism translates to safety. No child, no son will ever feel safe with a father until he becomes his hero. That boy that does not see a hero in his father will never feel safe. A little girl, unless she perceives, whether cognitively or not, emotionally, intellectually, one way or another, is she fears that daddy is a hero, she will feel safe. A hero, his first contribution will be a sense of security. Somebody shall praise the Lord. Why were the pilots who went out with the B-52s, why did the firemen on 9-11, why were the police first responders, why are they considered heroes? Because they create safe Environment. Amen. Amen. Pastor Stephanie, if you'll throw up there Proverbs 18 10, I'm taking it, it's not written on here, I don't have it written down, 
Well, let me see if my memory serves me right. Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong, fortified tower, and the righteous run into it and are what? Safe. You know why you came to Jesus? You see now. That's good preaching. Right? That's good preaching. I'm going to take another offering. No. Ah. You can't take everything serious right now. The name of the Lord, you see that? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Strong tower means fortified tower. You see? They strengthen it to make sure that if you go into that tower, no harm will befall you. What did Psalm 91 tell us? He will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways, lest you dash your foot against it. There's safety again. What did Psalm 23 tell us? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Leads me by the still what now? Even if I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear what? Why? Safety. Is that right now? Are you getting this? I hope you're getting this. The first contribution of heroism is a sense of safety. I've got to let that sink into your heart and mind. I've got, I got to let, just let that sink. And that's why in so many churches, pastors have not created an atmosphere, atmosphere of safety. And sheep who are unsafe under the leadership of that shepherd, when they're nervous, they don't even eat. Christians who feel unsafe with their pastor, I'm not going to take his word to him, he walks on water. Because there's no sense of safety. You know why these people are enjoying this church? Because they feel safe here. They're not going to be morally or spiritually raped in any way, shape, or form. No, sir. It's not going to happen. Now, this is... I'm, I'm going to bring you to, through some, to some people in the Scriptures, men and women, who have shown tremendous courage. How many know that what we read out of 1 Peter chapter, that, that, that when he spoke about that, when he said that Jesus left us an example, we should follow, and this is commendable to the Lord, that you commit yourself to Him who judges righteously when you are mistreated unfairly. How do you know that that takes courage? Amen. That takes courage. It takes a lot of courage. Now, so keep that in mind because maybe uh, can on the title of this, maybe we can put that on there, that heroism translates to safety concerning heroes of the faith. I think that would be a good, a good stepping stone. I got a couple more scriptures. First John chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. First John chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. But whoever keeps his word, the word keep there is not, gee, I'll put it in my pocket and keep it for a rainy day. Okay, this is not a savings account keep. All right, this is not refrigerator keep. Keep here means to practice, to keep right. on practicing. There's no such thing as taking the word of God and hibernating it somewhere and safekeeping as though you can make the Bible safe. Excuse me. If you keep his word, which means you're doing his work. Now, whoever does his word, truly the love of God is perfected or matured 
in him. And by this we know that we are in him. Because we do his word. We practice his word. We keep his word. Look at verse 6. And he who says he abides in him. Who are we talking about the him here? Right. Jesus ought himself also to walk. Just as he walked. Right. In obedience and pleasing the heavenly father. And not rendering evil for evil, but following that which is good. So now, we're going to bring you over to Corinthians. First Corinthians. And the question has to be answered here. Who will be our model? A hero of the faith and how should we assess, assess this hero? These are going to be good questions that we're going to be answering. Because, I'm, I'm sorry, watch now, look up here for a second. Believers need to have leaders. See? That's why you, you have what the Bible calls pastors. Some are good pastors, true pastors, real pastors who really know God. Okay, there are, there are still some of us left. Thank you for that. All right, so. But how, how are you identified? What are the traits that you're looking for to identify a good hero of the faith? So, and how, and how can we assess that hero? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11 to 13. 1 Corinthians 1, 11 to 13. For it has been declared to me concerning you, brethren, that those of Chloe's household, there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each one of you says, I'm a Paul, I'm a Paulus, or I'm a Cephas, or I'm of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were we baptized? Are we, or we, were you baptized in the name of Paul? Stop there for a second, okay? I'm going to show you what a hero isn't before we get to what a hero is. A hero is not one that is a show off, he's not one that is a braggadocious individual, he's not one that demands submission to him. That's not a hero. That's a Jim Jones situation. That's called cult. I would say that we as nominal saints need to have our discernment sharpened well to be able to discern what a hero is and should be in our lives. Because we hear a lot of things over the television and books, CDs, tapes, videos. I mean, no, that's true. We hear all kind of preaching everywhere. And everybody believes that they've got the right thing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so therefore, we, 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 we get pulled from one side to another. And so, watch here. Paul says, wait a minute now. If you choose one over Another, that is called sectarianism. I'm a Paul. Now I'll tell you what, if, if, if I had to juggle around from the apostles or not, I, Paul would be my man. I mean, there's no question about that. But I'm not going to separate from you because you choose Peter. Right. See what I'm saying? That's called sectarianism. I'm not going to choose John because you choose Peter. Or I'm not going to choose Paul because you choose Cephas or Apollos. Then that's sectarianism. That's not what it's about. And I'm going to show you what Paul's reasoning is with all of that. Now I say that each of you says, I'm a Paul, I'm a Apollos, or a Cephas, or I'm a Christ. Is Christ divided? 
A hero does not attract undue attention to himself. Okay? Now when Paul says, follow me, he didn't say, follow me. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. In other words, the minute that I don't follow Christ anymore, don't follow me anymore. I'm not your good example that I should be. Now, in verse uh, 11, that was 11 to 13, right? Chapter 3, now go to chapter 3, verse 21 through 23. Chapter 3, verse 21. And I'm going to be closing with this tonight because I, I have too much to give. Uh, this, this is a, this is one of those studies, you know. Because I'm going to tell you what, when I watch now, be, be, be sure to listen to me. Whether you acknowledge it or realize it or not, you have heroes in your life. Yeah. It may come as a form of philosophy, a worldview, an idol. Everybody has heroes. Everybody. Everybody has heroes. That's because we're human. And we look to associate with strength. With leadership. Strong leadership. Now, it says, Therefore, let no one boast in men. Okay? Now, if I say I'm Pauline in terms of teaching, that's not because I'm boasting of Paul. I'm boasting of the Christ that is in Paul, Amen. who Amen. gave the revelation to me through that vessel. Paul says, I'm nothing. What am I? And I'm just going to read this. I'm going to show this in just a minute here. So what? What? Me? I'm just a little old baldy guy. He's probably about my height with a, with a hook nose, bald. At least I got something on him. I mean, I got some hair left on my head. But, and Paul really was nothing really to look at. I mean, you know, what's, what's there? But people love Paul because Paul made them rich in Christ. Amen. Who wouldn't love that? I want to be with somebody who's going to enrich me. I want to be with that person who's going to make me spiritually wealthy and know more than I ever have before and understanding opening the word of God to us Amen. said don't boast in men because you're shortchanging yourself and you're putting man on a pedestal because if he falls where are you going to fall with him or her don't do that Christ should be your only object all right Amen. for why does he say that because all things are yours you see that Paul said don't pick one out of the bunch we all belong to you. Everything we have belongs to you. Now let's look at verse 22. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours, verse 23. And you are Christ's and Christ is God's. Did you get that line? Bang, 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 bang. Except he was going from the bottom up instead of the top down. <laughs> For instance, I had taught on this many, many, many years ago. What, what did, what did Paul have then that the others didn't have? Obviously, it was a revelation of Christianity given to him by the Holy Spirit that translated him up into the third, the realm and sphere of the third heaven. Nobody else had that. So when he comes down and starts writing and says, this is what I saw. So man, I, I can see why I can hang around with him because I, you know, I, I want to know that. So what did he have? That's what he had. What did John the Apostle have? That man had more love a truckload of blood. Did you know that John had more affection than Paul? Paul had a stubborn streak in him, argumentative from time to time, and coming from a disciplined Pharisaical background, he was hard-headed and argumentative. 
Just ask Barnabas, he'll tell you how hard headed Paul is. But John is the one that laid his head on Christ's boots. He said, Jesus, I love you. So why would I take all Paul and not John? I'm shortchanging myself. Now, what did Peter have that John didn't have and that Paul didn't have? Peter had as in French, which is boldness personified. Strength. He was uh, Clint Eastwood all day long. Okay. He he was the Arnold Schwarzenegger of his day. Don't mess with Texas. When it comes to the Apostle Peter. So, why would I want just Paul or just John or just Peter? Peter lacked in many of the areas. But I showed him. Now, what about Cephas? What in the world? Cephas? Cephas was an intellectual. How many believe we need more of that sometimes? <laughs> and so, but if, if, if that's his strong point, don't isolate yourself with Cephas just to have the intellectual value and content. Get some love in your heart and hang around with John a little bit. Get some revelation from the Apostle Paul and get you that strength and boldness from Peter. Yeah. Don't pick one. Get them all. Amen. Are you getting a picture here? Yeah. Some of them said that they were of Aquila and Priscilla. Some said we are of Barnabas. And so they were very divided in schisms in Corinth. Paul said, don't do that. You're shooting yourself in the foot. He does go, are you divided? Is Christ divided? He says, you have, you come behind and no spiritual gifts. You have all the gifts going on in your church and yet you're as carnal as they come because you cause division by choosing one over the other. He said, because you are Christ's you got it all. The revelation that's in Paul, you got it. The love that's in John, you got it. Huh? The boldness that's in Peter, you got it. The sophistication of Cephas, you got it. Man, man. He says, all things are yours, and you are Christ's, Amen. and Christ is God's. Good stuff. Amen. Good stuff. What about it, Brother Dave? Are we learning something? So, but we all need heroes. We're going to need to understand that dynamic of the human experience. All right? I'm going to come close now. Right? Uh -huh. My flaps are down the airport. I can see the runway. <laughs> right. I got to pull that throttle. <laughs> Just got to pull that throttle back. Maybe my landing's a little too fast. But we need heroes. And next week, Lord willing. I'm, I'm going to bring you into the characteristics and traits of a hero. And then we'll pick up some heroes in the scriptures and show you those traits in them. Hallelujah. But not just from the Bible. We need to have them in our lives. Today as we live. Did you know that I have some heroes right here in this church? Amen. No. In this church, in West Columbia, there are heroes. Yeah. Paul said that about the Thessalonians, Thessalonians and the Philippians. He says they boast of your faith everywhere. I'm so proud you're my hero. Hallelujah. <laughs> Good stuff. How did we give the Lord a clap off? Praise the Lord. So glad to have Debbie with us tonight. Thank you for being with us. You have blessed us. Your presence has 
ameliorated our situation. We appreciate it. Thank you for being with us. Have a trade same trip. And just let us know when you decide to move down, okay? Glad to help you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.